St. John chapter number 9, and we're going to read a few verses there. Okay, I am reading from the English Standard Version, and it says this. As he passed by, he being Jesus, he saw a man who was blind. How long was the man blind? From birth. And his disciples asked him, they say, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus answered and said, it was not that this man sinned, nor his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. What if I told you that the situation that you're dealing with in your life right now is not a punishment for you? What if I told you that the challenge or the frustration that you have in this moment right now is not a punishment from God, but it's an opportunity for God to show how mighty he is? What if I told you the pressure, hallelujah, that you are under today is not punishment, but it's preparation for promotion that's coming next? What if I told you that? So the Bible says that he says, um, Jesus answered and said, it is not that this man sinned or his parents, okay? But that the works of God might be displayed in him. Somebody say, in him. We must work the works of him who has sent us while it is day, because night is coming. And when night comes, no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spit on the on the ground and made a pie, a, excuse me, a, 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 a mud with mud and with his saliva, and he anointed the man's eyes with the mud. Now, I know you're like, I'm ready to leave right now, okay? I, uh, I didn't come to hear this today at church. That's all right. We'll, we'll break it down a little further. And he said to him, go and wash in the pool of Siloam, which means since. So he went and washed and came back saying, the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man that used to sit and beg? Some said, it is he. Others said, but, others says, no, but he is like him or he looks like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? And he answered, the man called Jesus with mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Salem and to wash. Go to Salem, excuse me, and wash. So I went and I washed and received my sight. And he said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. I'm going to stop right here because I can go on and on and on and on. But as you can see, today is Vision Sunday at Life Church Day County. And what that means is uh, I chose this story because there's so many elements in it, but what I wanted to start with was that sometimes you and I may uh, lack vision uh, for what is next, not because uh, we had, uh, not because of something that somebody did to us, right? But it's just the way life happens sometimes, right? We have to understand that being a follower of Jesus or being a believer of Jesus or being inquisitive about what Jesus wants to do in our life does not keep problems away from us. The fact that we came here today, I'm glad that you're here on Sunday, and I think it's important to come to the house of the Lord, but coming to the house of the Lord does not immune you from what can come, right? It, it, it helps you to better deal with how you handle what comes your way. I mean, think about this, right? For those who are vaccinated, Right? Some of us got vaccinated, some, some of us did not. But for those that are vaccinated, you know, I don't know about you, but I, I got vaccinated, okay? And I ended up having COVID. I was a little mad, okay? I'm like, wait a second, I don't like needles, okay? So I was crying before I even saw the needles. She's like, okay, just sit down. And I start, oh, no. And then when she pulled out the needle, I almost fainted. But anyways, that's another story for another day. But I remember she gave me the shot, and I'm like, okay, I'm feeling good. Well, I felt a little pain outside of that, but I felt good. And then I think it was about four months later, I ended up with COVID. And I'm thinking, what in the world is going on? And I remember going back to the lady. I was working uh, uh, at uh, Tellurian at the time. And I went back to the lady and I said, what is happening here? 
here. You didn't gave me this shot, okay? Maybe all the people was right. Maybe this was the mark of the beast, and I just took the mark of the beast for nothing. Maybe this was what they said it was. And I'm like, why did I even get the shot if I was going to get COVID in the first place? And she went on to say that the fact that you got the shot, it was pain for, the, for that moment, but that temporary pain prevented long-term pain. Let me say it again. That temporary pain prevented long-term pain. So there is a pain that happens in our lives that instead of pain to punish, it is a pain to protect. Let me say it again. There is a pain that happens in our life that is not a pain to punish, but a pain to protect. Is there anyone who is under the sound of my voice who has had your heart broken and you cried and you ran out of tissue and you was mad and you was listening to rap songs about getting revenge and you was listening to Taylor Swift about getting your heart broken and you was listening uh, 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 to, to uh, 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 Can You Stand the... Who sings that? Help me, Lord. New Edition. New Edition. Thank you. You listening to New Edition <laughs> crying. Can you stand... And you were sad and you were overwhelmed. However, today... The same things you cried over, today you are celebrating over, right? Is there anybody who in the moment you had a breakup and you say, oh my Lord, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Why? Okay? You had a breakup and you were you, you was singing the tank song. Please don't go. Why? Why did you do this to me? Uh-huh. And you were sad and you were calling your friends like, should, should I take her back? Should I take them back? Should I try to explain what happened? Should I go? Should I make the next step? And you spent all this time and energy about it. And you were told up from the flow up about it. But now, you say, whoo, thank you, Lord. Now, you say, that breakup may, may have not have been the best thing that happened to me. But it was good for me. Even though you cried, it was good for you. Even though it was painful, it was good for you. Even though it was hurtful, it was good for you. Because the end of that meant the beginning of something new. Amen. Amen. The end of one thing is really just the new beginning for something new. And if you, if you and I hold on to the old thing, we can never receive the new thing. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I know sometimes, uh, and I've been there before, sometimes you're in a situation where you're like, you know what, well, I would rather hold on to the evil I know instead of the evil I don't know. Well, what if you're holding on to the evil you don't know and the good that you don't know is being blocked because you hold on to the evil, right? We, 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 sometimes our perspective is skewed and we say, I would rather stay here and hold on to what I know than embrace something that is new. But can I tell you, sometimes better is on the other side of a breakdown. Sometimes better is on the other side of what appears to be a breakdown. Okay? Because I like to say it this way. Sometimes what feels Watch me. Now, don't, don't run around this gym when I say this, but it's going to help you. Sometimes, what feels like a breakdown is actually a breakthrough. Let me say it again, because I saw it go right past you, okay? Sometimes, what feels like a breakdown is really a breakthrough. The pain that you have to uh, uh, go through is producing something that is greater. So, this young man is born blind, and they say, the same thing that we're saying now. When things happen in society, the first thing some people want to do is blame. Who's for us, right? And who did this? And who did that? You, uh, the Republicans are blaming the Democrats, and the Democrats are blaming the Republicans, and the, the poor people are blaming the rich people, and the rich people are blaming the poor people. The first thing some people want to do is they would rather blame than figure out solutions. They would rather point fingers than to problem solve. And this is the this has been going on for a long time. There, there are people who would rather d uh, discuss what went wrong instead of how we can learn from what went wrong. Nothing is wrong with examining what is wrong, but if we're only going to examine what's wrong, we're missing the opportunity to embrace something new and something better. And they said, whose fault is it? They said, who messed up? Who made the mistake? And Jesus says to us, he said, this has nothing to do with what the young man did when he was born. And this has nothing to do with what his parents did. He said, 
this young man could not see so that the works of God might be displayed in him. Anybody in here got trophies? You got a track trophy, a bowling trophy, you got a, uh, I don't know, a, a breakdance trophy. Anybody? Raise, raise your hand, you got a trophy in here. Okay. Mr. Larry being humble, he's like, yeah, I got a few of them. Just few. Right? But what do you do when you have a trophy? Do you take a trophy and do you put it under your bed? <laughs> what do you do with, with a trophy? Something that you won fair and square, right? Something that you uh, uh, won uh, uh, with your hard work and energy. Last night, me and Gina were watching um, Shaq has a new documentary on HBO Max, which is really, really, really good. Uh, and one of the things he said was, um, he said that when he came to the Lakers, okay, uh, and he left Anthony Hardaway, which is a whole other story for another day, but anyway, when he got to the Lakers, uh, one of the things that uh, after they were losing with Dale Harris, if you're not a basketball fan, I'm sorry, I'm really losing right now, but I know in totally know exactly what I'm talking about here. So uh, uh, Dale Harris said was losing, and he said he wanted to get Phil Jackson because they needed a voice in the locker room that people would respect. And he said Phil Jackson had him come out to Montana, okay, and Phil Jackson got this lake house that he still has, and he said before he got in the house, he saw all six of Phil Jackson's trophies, they were in the sunroom. And he said, before I could get to the house, I saw them. And he had this uh, this, this uh, uh, opening in the room where that light was shining down on all six trophies. And he said, I need to have a display like that. And this is what we do. He says, a display is something that you have and you don't hide, but you show proudly. Mm -hmm. And this is the issue that many of us have. Many of us have come through some dark times, right? Many of us have had some dark moments in our lives. Many of us, okay, you sitting up in here, uh, sanctified in Kentucky Friday, you sitting up in here, looking all together right now. But some of us got some, some moments and, and some experiences in our lives where we were in a dark place, we were in a challenging place, we were in a place where we were dangerous, we were in a place where we were a threat to anybody connected to us, not necessarily physically, but we were emotionally dangerous, or we were relationally dangerous, or we were manipulators, and the truth of the matter is, that was a pain issue, and we try to hide it. But what God wants you and I to know is a painful area in our life is an area for us to display because it shows that no matter how low we are, God can minister to us there. It reminds us that no matter how tough it is, it is never too tough for God to turn it around. So he says that God wants to do a work in the life of this man that God's power and God's ability might be displayed in him. Let me tell you something. You should never be ashamed to tell people where you came from because it is a sign that God can take a life and do something miraculous with it. You should never be, be ashamed to tell people, listen, I have been through some dark times and I got out and it is because of the goodness of the Lord that I, I, I have been in some moments where I did not know if I was going to get out. I was ready to snap on everybody, yet God got me out because when you do that, you are displaying the fact that the glory of God can be made manifest in your life. And it will show people, watch me, I don't have to be perfect to be used by God. I don't have to. Matter of fact, if God was only going to use perfect people, he would have no options. Because there are none. There are only imperfect people, watch me, and people who act like they're perfect. Let me say it again. There are only imperfect people and people who act like they're perfect. And let me tell you, the people who act like they're perfect probably got it worse off because you got to put all this time and all this energy, all these filters, all this thing. You got to get the right. It's kind of like when you take a selfie. How many selfies do you take before you find the one you post? Right? You got to get the light right. You got to get the angle right. You got to make sure your kids ain't running around in the background. And God says, I can do something in the life of imperfect people. But I cannot do anything in the life of someone who does not acknowledge that they need help. Okay? You, you ever, some of my kids uh, do this sometimes. I'm not going to name them by name. But you ever like be eating something? And, you know, you eating the snack that you like or food that you like. And instead of your kid asking for some, 
They say something like this, ooh, I'm really hungry. <laughs> now, if you really hungry, why don't you just ask for what you would like? But instead of saying that, they come sit right next to you. They be like, ooh, daddy, I am so hungry. I'll be looking at them in my head and I'll be thinking, yeah, mm-hmm. And until you ask me, you're going to be just as hungry as you. And it's like, why don't you just ask for what you want? Why don't you just ask for what you want, right? But the issue is sometimes there is a vulnerability in the asking. There is a vulnerability in saying, I need help and I need something and I need to uh, 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 have things better than they are right now. And sometimes you can be in a, dip, dip, uh, a low place and a dark place and it's like, man, I don't want to say how vulnerable I was uh, because it shows that I need help. Let me tell you, I've been in some dark places and some vulnerable places in my life. I'm not ashamed to tell you. Let me tell y'all right now, okay? I said I ain't never been on CCAP, but I have been in jail. I'm about to tell y'all the story right now. Some of y'all are like, get your coat. We leave right now. <laughs> so I was in Minneapolis. I was born and raised in Minneapolis. And um, I remember um, I was driving whose car was it? My sister's car. I don't remember whose car I was driving, but I was on Broadway. If you know Minneapolis, you're familiar on the north side. North side, and uh, I was driving and I did my license was expired. So a, a police officer pulled me over, but he took so long, let me see if I can get the story right, because it was so long ago now. He took so long to get out the car, I said, he must not be pulling me over, okay? So I pulled off, and when I pulled off, okay, why are you laughing at me already, Miss Becky? Miss Becky, like, you're a criminal. Let me ask the Gina you, babe, I don't want to hear this story. I pulled off, and he didn't follow me. So I said, okay, well, maybe he wasn't trying to pull me over, so. I drove, I didn't speed or nothing. It wasn't fast and furious. I just pulled off and I went home to my parents' house, that is. Man, oh no, that's not, that, that's, let me remember the story. That is not what occurred. What occurred is he asked me um, for my name and I knew my license was suspended. So I gave him my brother's name. I think you know the story, Alton, that's my brother. If you don't know the story, you might want to log off right now. So, um, um, I gave them my brother's name instead of my name, who I knew had a license, but I did not have, uh, my license was suspended at the time, so after he gave me my stuff, he was like, wait a second, because uh, we can't verify who you are, and I did not want him to verify who I was, because my license was suspended, so then I drove home. I didn't zoom or anything, I just drove, made a right, got to my parents' house, got out of the car. I was chilling. At this point, okay, I'm dating myself because I remember when it happened. At this point, FX had this show where this was a whole different era, where it was a white family that was posing as a black family. Okay, if y'all remember that, this was a long time ago. This was a white family. It was like a reality show, and they were posing as a black family. And I remember I'm sitting there watching this show. My parents got a big window in the front. I see the police pull up, so I'm just sitting there watching. What are they for? Here, here for. So they uh, 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 ring the doorbell, and I'm like, I hope they hear from me, but I go and ring the doorbell because I don't want to be embarrassed in my own parents' house. And see, I should have called an attorney. See, I should have called an attorney. So I step outside the house, and I'm like, yeah, how can I help you? And this dude's like, oh, so you're a liar, aren't you? I'm like, excuse me? He's like, you're a liar, aren't you? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, you're not Alton Foster. You're Alan Foster, and I'm going to arrest you for false information to a police officer. I ain't wearing no shoes, okay? I'm like, what you mean? Can I at least get my shoes? I think he took me with no shoes on, and I ended up doing like a 48-hour uh, thing in there, but that ain't what I tell people when my kids ask. I'll be like, yeah, I did 14 years. You know, I lied to them. Now I'm joking. But, <laughs> but what ended up happening from that situation is one of the things that I came to learn is that if I wouldn't have stepped outside the house, they wouldn't have been able to arrest me, right? Unless they had a warrant, right? Uh, uh, because uh, they didn't have a jurisdiction over that place, but I stepped out, and because I stepped out into that place, uh, I uh, became vulnerable uh, to that whole opportunity and the things that happened, and it was a situation that I put myself in. I share that with you to let you know that I have been in challenging situations too, and I have not always done the right thing as well. However, what God can do in the life of someone who is willing to admit their, in, uh, their vulnerability is something miraculous. He can do something miraculous in the life of somebody who is willing to admit their vulnerability. So here's what happened. The dude says, I'm blind, and Jesus says, okay. The question is, do you want to stay that way? 
Because when we get to verse number six, after Jesus meets the man, the Bible says that Jesus spits on the ground and makes mud with his saliva. And the question that the young man was probably thinking is the same thing that I would have been thinking, or you would have been thinking. Hold on. Now, wait a second. First of all, right, I, I want to see, but how is this going to help me to see? How, how is what you're doing in this moment going to help me to see? Now, the man's blind, so of course, he cannot see what Jesus is doing, but he hears what, you know, people make a sound when they spit, right? So he hears the sound. Oh, 
through oppressing and the pressure. But what the pressure produces is something greater that you and I cannot produce. So the Bible says he anoints the man's eyes with mud. In other words, he puts something dirty on him, but the dirt on him is not going to stay on him. I, I, I'm ready to run around this gym because sometimes people try to put things on you, and even though they put it on you, it's not going to remain on you. And he said, the first thing I want you to do is go to the pool and wash. I got to close. The Bible says he goes to the pool and he washes the mud off. And as soon as he washes the mud off, he can see. As soon as he goes through what was temporarily uncomfortable, temporarily bothersome, temporarily frustrating, temporarily, I can't believe this is happening to me, temporarily, why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to my body? Why is this happening to my family? Why is this happening? Why do I have to go through this mental health crisis? Why do I have to go to this health scare? Why do I have to go through this divorce? Why do I have to go through this frustration? Why do I have to go through having uh, one person turn their back on me and then another person turn their back on me and then another person turn their back? Why do I have to go through a situation where the finances dry up? The Bible says that he goes through it and then he washes it off. And as soon as he washes it off, he can see. He can see. In other words, going through the dirty situation rewarded him. Mm -hmm. Because when you quit, you never get the reward. Because when you quit, halfway through, you never get the understanding of why you had to go. Listen, hear me and hear me well. If you are going through a painful situation today, if you have to, take a break. But do not quit. If you have to, take a time out. I'm talking to you, but don't quit. If you have to, okay, get a technical file like Draymond Green. But whatever you do, do not get thrown out of the game. Because if you get out, you will never see why you had to go through what you had to go through to get to what you have. So because this is Vision Sunday. Go through a situation, but go through a situation through with the one who has power to give you wisdom and insight, not only to make it through, but to make it through with joy and say, I'm glad that I cried one night. But the Bible says it this way, even though you cried one night, it's not going to have the final say. The Bible says weeping, hallelujah, may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. I had a teacher. His name was Mr. Rucker, black man in my elementary school class. And I remember I asked. Mr. Rucker. I said, can I go to the bathroom? And he said, yes. And then he stood in front of the door. I said, Mr. Rucker, can I go to the bathroom? He says, uh, yes. And then he stood in front of the door. I said, Mr. Rucker, you sit here. You said I can go. What's the problem? He said, the issue, Alvin, is you're asking about ability, but what you should be asking is about permission. I said, what do you mean? He said, instead of asking, should I, uh, can I go to the bathroom? You should be asking, may I go to the bathroom? Because may that you have my permission. So when the Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, he is saying that weeping has my permission to continue until this point. He's saying weeping cannot have the final say because I have given it consent to stop at this point. It's like when you give your kids a time to be at home. You can be out, you can play basketball as long as you want, but when the street lights go out, you better be in this house because you have the ability, but I've given you permission. So when he says weeping may endure for a night, he is saying there is a moment where I'm drawing the line where weeping will not be able to overwhelm you anymore, and it's time for joy to come in. The Bible says that this man could see what he never could see because he washed off something that was put on him. And then
there are some things that were put on you that you gotta wash off. There were some things that your mama said that she knew she shouldn't have said, but she said it anyway. There were some things that your ex said to hurt you. They knew it wasn't true, but they knew that if they could say it to you, it would work uh, uh, on you for years and years and years. There are some lies that somebody has spoken over you, and you're still believing the lies because they said, I want you to know today on this vision Sunday, if you're going to get the vision, you've got to wash it off of you. You've got to stop replaying it in your mind. You've got to wash it off of you. You've got to stop telling yourself, this is just what I deserve. No, you deserve the best because you are a child of the almighty God. Do not let the fact that somebody did not understand your value make you question your value. Uh-huh. You, you don't allow being at the wrong location. ordered anything off of Amazon and every now and then you order something off of Amazon and it goes to the wrong house and because the right package is at the wrong house somebody might disrupt or do something they have no business uh, doing with it but let me tell you if you are the person that God made you to be and somebody doesn't want to be with you or somebody doesn't want to hire you or somebody doesn't want to do life with you or somebody doesn't move forward with you it doesn't mean that you are not valuable it may mean that they don't understand your value it may mean that they don't see it, not that you don't have it. Uh-huh. Because sometimes we have things that are more valuable than we know, but we take it to the wrong people to try to evaluate. Sometimes you got something that's valuable. Okay, what, what's the name of that trade show where they uh, uh, take the valuables and they bring it to the dude? It's like a 2000 Sunday bring it to the dude, and the dude would tell him, I don't remember. I think it was like Rose. There we go, Antique Road Show. And they would be bringing stuff to this dude or this lady, and they would say, help us to under, and this has been something that had been under somebody's bed for 30 years. And they didn't know what they were sleeping on top of. You thought it was junk, but it really was pricey. You thought the whole relationship was a waste of your time, but you don't know that this inconvenience actually helped you to raise the standard. It's the rites of passage for a Christian. Because you and I can end up in a dark place. One of the reasons why we can be comforted knowing that we're in a dark place is because Jesus has already been there. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Y'all remember the story, right? We're going to preach about it in a little bit on Easter, right? Jesus Christ is crucified. He's spit upon. He's spit upon. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Blood is coming. They put a 
spear in his side and it went all the way through. He is up on the cross and he dies and he's in the grave for three days. Okay? How despondent do you think the disciples were? How frustrated do you think they were? Because they like, this brother was not who he said he was. Because if he was who he said he was, he wouldn't have died. But what Jesus wanted us to know is even when it looks bad, good is getting ready to come out of it. The bad situation cannot have the final say. Jesus was in the grave not one day, not two days, but three days. And I know the people were thinking, this is it. It's going to end like this. This is, I, I wasted all my time. But on the third day, something that was buried, they didn't understand that Jesus really wasn't buried. He was planted. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the difference between being buried and being planted is you bury something and you have no intention to come back and get it most of the time. But when you plant something, you put it in the ground and you don't have to go back out to the ground to get it because eventually if you plant something, what happens? It comes up out of the ground. And they buried you. But what they didn't understand is even though they put you in the ground and bury you, God was nourishing you. He was keeping you and he was ministering to you and he was reminding you of who you are. He was reminding you that there is no dark thing that is more powerful than you. So your vision is coming back to you today. Your hope is coming back to you today. The power that Jesus Christ has is coming back to you today. And my prayer for you today is that you believe it. My prayer for you today is that you walk in it. My prayer for you today is that you say, Lord, it doesn't matter how bad it's been. I believe that some way, somehow, you're going to work this out for my good and your glory. Some way, somehow, you're going to take this jacked up, ugly, unbelievable situation and you're going to get the glory out of this. Even though I don't understand. Even though I don't know what's happening. Even though I don't know what it looks like. I believe that that's going to happen for me.